So hi, welcome to the another session of Selenium Web Driver. So far, we are exploring all the different type of locators, starting with ID, name, tag name, class name, link text, partial link text, and the next two locators which are very important and probably these are the only locators which you will end up using in your day-to-day -day life, which is XPath and then CSS Select. Okay. So th those two two locators are very important, and in most of our automation projects, the architects or the automation you know, uh, team will prefer to use this locators. So we're gonna learn a lot of things in upcoming couple of sessions only about XPath and CSS Selector. So before I even talk about XPath and CSS Selector, quick background at what exactly is XPath and uh, what is CSS, okay? I know you must be knowing some part of it, but uh, let's quickly do a recap. Right. So I don't want you to be an HTML developer because uh, no, uh, uh, you don't want to go deep down into an HTML and a CSS, but at least you should definitely know how the pages are structured, right? So this is a simple example in front of you, uh, the, the HTML code, or I would say an HTML tags, which is responsible to display, display this thing on, on the right side, right? So if you carefully observe, the HTML is, is basically a collection of tags, right? Uh, it's basically a collection of tags in a simple word if I say uh, let's say a chocolate wrapper and you know uh, the wrapper defines how the or what the chocolate is right so there are there are and again layman language I would say there are two main types of HTML tags one are open-ended I would say the one which is opening and closing so if you see this one title right so there is a tag which gets open and then there is a, some information in it and then the tag gets closed right this is a this is a one type of tag there is another type of tag where you will not find any, uh, you know, uh, let, let's say BR tag. There, there is no closing and opening. It is just a simple BR tag, okay, which is a break line tag. So these are the two category of tags probably you will find in uh, all of your HTML, okay. Now, now every tag will basically define how your HTML is gonna display on the page, right? So here on your right side, if you see, every tag will play a certain role in how this information should be displayed. Now there is one more, <clears throat> there is one more thing in between the tags. If you see in the A tag, you again see this information. Now this we understood in our previous session is attribute and value, right? Yeah. So we provide more information in a tag so that you know the, it helps the tag to understand what and how to show or to display that information. So this is nothing but an attribute and this is nothing but a value of that attribute. This is very important to understand in specially writing customized XPaths, right? And uh, we also need to understand different, different type of attribute and values. So today, at least we'll get familiar with how the HTML looks like. So now if you're familiar with this, now what we're gonna, <clears throat> there, are, there are various number of tags. If you go to this you know, W3Schools page, you can actually learn some of them. So let's say this is an input, uh, let's say button, right? If you see this tag, this doesn't have opening and closing anything. It's a simple one tag, right? And if I run this, now you will see a small button here. It's a clickable. Of course, I'm not writing any action on that, but I added a button on my page. Similarly, if I want to add a checkbox, so let's say this is the tag for it. I'll simply copy from here, I go here, and uh, I just add it here and say run and then see yes, there is a checkbox. I added a checkbox, right? So this is a one type of tag which and this is the another type of tag. So we need to understand this and whatever information in between them is attribute and value, right? Which defines more information about that tag. Now XPath, <clears throat> again in a simple language, if my automation tool, if my Selenium web driver wants to locate this checkbox, right? If he wants to locate this checkbox on this page, how it's gonna find, right? So X, again, I'll consider like from this end to this end and from this end to this end, right? On this entire entire web page, how I'm gonna find this particular element. So for that, I'll have to tell my automation tool here in our case of WebDriver that, hey, can you look into the page for an input tag with this attribute and this value, right? So here I'll say, I'm saying, hey, look for input tag, right? And find out 
with let's say whatever the attribute uh, as of now i'll say attribute is type right equal to what's this value let's say button right okay so <clears throat> this kind of information we'll have to construct in a specific syntax which is understandable by a browser and when we write this particular syntax in a in a, in a specific way that is nothing but uh, locating an element using xpath okay that's that's all that's that's we're gonna learn there are various ways with which we can write an xpath right we're gonna learn most of it now second thing is css what is css it's a styling sheet so again uh, to give you an example in a simple language just styling sheets is nothing but to make your html fancy right yeah. to make it fancy or to look to look more you know uh, more appropriate i would say so let's let's three uh, w3 css uh, a simple example i'll show you so that you understand how the css can change the look and feel of your so if you see this you know in this in this particular example where is my css if you see here right dot css yeah. so basically we define a, a define a css in a in a, in a particular uh, html and in that css we write some code which basically defines how your page is gonna look like if i disable this or if i remove this let me show you if i remove this and if i run this there is some change you see observed here yeah. just see what's the change you see the color right yeah. so so in, in another language i'm just styling my web page right We're using a css now in in a similar fashion what happens html developers they write a lot of html content and in order to make that html look more classy or look more good they take they may they, they take use of css right a styling sheet similarly when we go out to parties we dress up very good and then just to style ourselves you know especially ladies they'll add some more ornaments or you know some kind of makeup or whatever styling information right so that that will that will help them look better right look look more attractive so this is so similarly to look our html more attractive look more appropriate uh, we use css now using this css as well we can locate the element okay you no need to learn how to write a css you no need to even learn you know what exactly is css if you understand what the css is used for right because css css targets a specific element and styles styles that element you know enhances the look and feel of that element which means css must be understanding where the element is located right so that's why we are, we can also use a css as a locator to understand where my element is located and then perform an action on it okay so we gonna learn this both ways today what is and how to identify using xpath and how to identify using a css okay <clears throat> now let's first go through some syntax as a theory <clears throat> this we already understood i'm going to i'm going to come back on this and i'm going to explain you this later on okay uh, about the firepath plugin or or there are a lot of different type of plugins which are used uh, i can i can suggest you some of them but frankly speaking i don't want to use don't want you to use any of the plugins i want you to write your xpaths and css manually so that you don't you don't fall or you are not dependent on the plugin outputs you know the plugins is going to help you to capture the xpaths plugin is going to help you to capture the css but if you know how to write your own xpaths then nothing can beat that okay <laughs> uh, the plugin may work on your company's website or they may block it or yeah. due to various yeah. right so you don't want to depend on any plugin of course the plugin helps but if you know the basics how to write a css how to write a customize xpaths then i think nothing can beat that okay so that's what i'm going to explain you and teach you if you go back after before 3 4 years you know uh, most of the selenium tutors must be training using this ready made plugins you know they'll say hey just download this plugin just click on the copy xpath and then use that xpath in your selenium code and then boom you are good right uh, but they will not explain you how that xpath came you know 
the structure of that X path, uh, the structure of the CSS. That's why I'll say, do not depend on this. And anyway, the Firefox has already deprecated this plugin, which was widely used before some years, you know, uh, just for Selenium, Selenium automation. So this, this plugin is no more available. And there are some more plugins in Chrome. Chrome path is another famous plugin nowadays, you know, uh, but yes, uh, let's not, let's not, and I'm not going to teach you using plugins either. Uh, so that's why we'll be using our own, uh, no, uh, yeah, our, uh, ourselves we're going to write. Okay. So let's understand about the syntax, the customized XPath. You know how to get the XPath from your browser, right? You right click on that element and then you copy the XPath, correct? I don't know whether you have observed or not. So far in, at least in Chrome, you see two options. One is copy XPath and copy full XPath, right? If you would have observed that, let me show you quickly. There are two options in a Chrome where you can copy XPath and where you can copy complete XPath. So let's say if I wanna copy this button, so right click, go to inspect. And here, whenever it highlights that element, if you right click here, go to copy, you see two, copy XPath and copy full XPath, right? Yes. So, so far uh, we were teaching, uh, sorry, we were learning about copy XPath. And uh, I'm going to explain you the difference between both of them in, in this session. But yes, I want you to understand or observe that there is a two different type of XPath it is providing you, right? So far, we were directly using this. If I copy XPath here and if I, if I just try to paste it somewhere else, this is how it looks, right? Yeah. This is how it looks. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's go back to understand a syntax. How do we write the XPath of our own? If I'm not dependent on that right click. So let's let's assume that right click is also disabled or it's not working or it's not giving you the correct X path, right? Mm -hmm. Then what you should be doing, you should be able to write your own X path. Now how that X path works. Remember this simple syntax, the first one, which is double forward slash a tag name, right? And after following the tag name, you have to define in a square brackets at the rate attribute equal to value. Okay. A very simple X path for a specific element. So if you want to identify any element, first you need to understand what is the type of that element, right? Either it's input or it's a, it's a, you know, a button or it's a checkbox or, or whatever. First you need to identify its type and or, or in a, an HTML language, it's a tag name, right? Whatever the tag name is, then you have to write its attribute and value at the rate attribute equal to value. This is a simple syntax. Second syntax, if you don't want to give a, let's say tag name, right? If you don't want to give a tag name, we're gonna explore both of them. You can simply provide star, uh -oh. okay? So if you don't want to provide a tag name, you can simply provide double forward slash star and then similarly in a square brackets at the rate attribute equal to value, right? This is the <coughs> one, another syntax to identify or write a customized XPath. So before I go into this, uh, what is this element tab and console tab, let's first understand writing the customized XPath, okay? For one example. Now, let me create another test case. So I'll say new class and I'll say customized, I'll say XPath. I'm not following the, on the specific uh, notations, which I should, but it's okay. Okay, so customized XPath, I created a new test case. So let me copy some, at least a setup part of it. So I would say setting up and launching a Firefox driver. Okay, at least till this I can use. Or I think I can come to locators. Okay, uh, Facebook.com, okay. Till this we can go, All right? Okay, let me quickly run this so that we get a facebook.com and then from there on. <clears throat> okay, so I'm on the facebook.com. Now here, let's say if I wanna enter something in this particular text box using customized XPath. I don't wanna do a right click and inspect and you know, uh, copy that XPath. I'm gonna write on my own. Now how will I write? So let me keep here. Now, if you identify what is the tag name, 
tag name is input tag name is input right so okay so let me write driver dot get and now by dot what is that sorry <laughs> driver dot find element by dot x path right now here in the x path expression in double quotes first thing you have to give forward slash tag name what is the tag name let's go tag name is input right okay <clears throat> so go here and then give input and then here in square brackets what i need to mention at the rate attribute so let's say i want to use there are a lot of attribute values if you see right you see id you see class and uh, but but the class has a spaces or underscores which i was asking you to avoid right and then you have type equal to text name equal to email there are so many things so let's let's assume i want to use name okay so or if i just copy here just let me copy this complete now come here at the rate i'll say name equal to i, do, I don't want this and i want it this to be single quotes okay so far so good tag name tag name at the rate attribute equal to value right and is there a situation where you might have a, a two or more input boxes yes 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 there will be that's what i want to show you that if this doesn't work then what is the next option right how how we gonna are we gonna uh, explore writing different different ways till it reaches to a point that we are able to identify the desired element correctly right now before even you run this generally what we do whatever the customized x path we will design we will write it and we'll try to run it and if we hit an exception we will conclude that this is not working right but that's a time consuming right we will have to run it and wait till the browser invokes go till the point yeah. which we don't want to do all the time it's not a uh, it's not time consuming sorry time effective now what the quickest thing you should do here is now this is called as uh, validating whether your customized x path is correct or not if you already on the inspect page right here you see this search html yeah. once you are here you go to your search html and just paste whatever customized x path you wrote and you hit enter okay you are you are here you are getting an error uh, I don't know Firefox gives sometimes these kind of issues, but in a Chrome, let me show you on the Chrome. So let's say if I want to identify this run button. Okay. So go to inspect. Now you see this, this button has so many attribute values. This looks really weird. <coughs> okay. What I'm going to do here is, and do I have any specific, I want to teach on a simple attribute value let me go to some other let's go to salesforce.com and let me go to login okay now here right click inspect and uh, okay here i have type equal to email right so now if i want to write a customized xpath for this particular how i'm gonna do i'm gonna <coughs> so on this on this itself you do control f okay so once you do control f on the element tab itself right you see this particular uh, find or, or, or a search box okay so here only you can start writing your customized xpath so double forward slash what is the in tag input right if you see it started identifying the inputs right it started identifying the inputs and then what is the next thing in square brackets at the rate what was that type right equal to email see the moment i wrote it correctly identified that element and it highlighting this can you see this and it also says one of one this is very important the one of one means with with your x path whatever you are writing it is able to identify only one element and that is what we need because if it says one of two which means with the given x path it is able to identify how many more than one which is not the which which is not the xpath we want to use right because otherwise it's gonna perform an action on the first 
found element with that matching x path are you getting my point yeah. so let me let me remove this the moment i type double forward slash you see one of 40 which means there are 40 input tags on this right let me give example here itself login url and login type there are two different right so he, here if i want to type in a first square bracket at the rate and then i'll say login url i have to give correct exact uh, case sensitive equal to and in in the value of it what is that oh sorry i think name name is the attribute yeah name is the attribute okay let me let me do this step by step so that we'll understand how many results it takes see name one of 31 now out, out of one of 40 it has came down to one of 31 right equal to and then in this i will write login so just type login now if you see the moment you type login it says one of one right but now if i say url it now you see it has highlighting the other element now it, it is also saying one of one right so if you just there to log in how come it is no, there are there are different different links. So this this particular link, I don't know what it, which one it is highlighting. Let me see. So I think uh, in the in the input text box, there are different different elements with these types. They are hidden. So you know, I am not able to see that on the on the page. But yeah, internally there there are some elements with of those uh, properties. But yeah, to give an example that. Uh, this is the way to write a customized x path this is one way there are a lot of ways we're going to learn all of them step by step right one simplest so in a firefox it it doesn't work ideally it should but uh, the, the way we have written and then we hit enter it should show you the matching result right no 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 there is no problem uh, it, it just firefox issue uh i i don't know yeah let's let's run the code and see okay with the same x path see this is the same x path we wrote right and now what we're gonna do here is dot send keys right we're gonna uh, enter some information so i'll say oops uh, okay sorry find x funds found send keys and here i'll say hey this is customized x path So let's run this and see if our xpath is correct then firefox will allow to enter those keys right so i'm just running launching a facebook.com now as you see it entered right hey this is customized xpath this is the one simple way now if you <clears throat> i don't know whether you are observing it or not uh, let me go back to the facebook.com now here along with the name along with the name it even have a lot of other information right yeah. so i can use any of them but <clears throat> uh, you need to uh, use those attribute values which looks genuine or not dynamic okay you have to make use of such attribute values which are probably not changing on every execution or on a day-to-day -day basis right yeah. that's the thumb rule and with more practice we will able to understand that now another example is id so instead of name you can also use id the value is same for both of them right so here in my code the simple change what i'll do is here exactly here i'll only do id right <clears throat> and then it, it should work in the way it is now this is a one syntax and we you we will be able to write or customize xpath using this and this is equivalent to using by dot id you know if you remember we were using by dot by dot id and then we were only giving id value here right id value was email right but now if you want to use x path and then make use of id then this is how you should be using okay now difference between by dot id and this one is it's gonna look id value under input tag only whereas by dot id will look for the id value on an entire page doesn't matter what tag it is Are you... yeah 
exactly so so the, the by dot id it doesn't understand that the tag value you know the what what tag it is it will only say hey do i have that id available right if that id is of a button checkbox input box or anything it will try to perform an action on it because if it found the id value it will try to access that doesn't matter what the tag type is but here when you write an x path you say hey i want to found i want to identify input tag with this id which is more appropriate and more fast avoids error right so this is one example now the another syntax is if you don't want to provide a tag name right if you don't want to provide a tag name you can still use it now this is going to be similar to your by dot id so if here i don't want to provide an input i can simply provide a star right so rather than what i'm going to do here is uh, one way using tag name and then i'll copy this paste it here and then using without without tag name right so here i'll say star and then what i'll do is i'll change it the immediately it types uh, customize x path here i'll say changing the value using uh, id or whatever yeah okay so let me change it back to name so here we are identifying with the help of name right <clears throat> and uh, we are specifically giving an input here we are not identifying with the help of any tag we are just giving okay let me find out with the help of id with the star right and then and then uh, <clears throat> trying to change the value let's see if this works let me run this launching the facebook.com can you see this it has entered it has entered first hey this is a customized x path right and then it has appended the value like changing the value using id correct because exactly yeah we didn't clear it that's why it just appended the value whatever it was there in the text box but it worked this this also worked right so this is an another syntax for writing a customized x path are you clear till this okay now <clears throat> these are the these are the two ways with which you can write a customers x path but these are not the only two ways we're going to learn a lot of different variety of flavors okay so be ready for it okay. now <clears throat> one more thing is before even you go in your console or before even you run your test i'm suggesting you to validate it using this search box right i don't know why this uh, the firefox is not working but yes uh, you can surely do it on the chrome i don't know yeah but the chrome will give you the right results okay here now you see so instead of input if i don't want to use input what i'll do here is i'll use star now you see even if i'm using a star it is giving me one of one right which means i am able to identify my element correctly using this x path okay so so this is called as developer console of a chrome which is very powerful and really like it and you should able to use it you should know the features of it so that you will able to use it uh, what do you say to its maximum you know uh, you will able to utilize yeah you will have, you will able to utilize it fully so and another another way i'm going to teach you that is going to be a little advanced but again it's it's good if you know it this is the one simple way with which you can identify your x path right just do control f and then uh, try to type in another way uh, more developer specific if you go to console just go to click on console you see this here you can type a function now for for identifying an element using an x path there is a function so just it's, it's it's kind of a jquery i believe uh, you just type dollar and then type x for x path okay type dollar x x for x path and then in this double quotes 
in this basically it's a function so you need to give a value what value you will give whatever the x path so consider this dollar x is nothing but find or find elements you know uh, by by dot x path consider this okay now here you give this value now here you have to give this value in double quotes because it's it's an x path right so give this in double quotes and then come here and hit enter the moment you hit enter you should get output like this now you see it has it has given an output of an which element the exact element you are trying to identify and length has to be one if the length is one and if you expand this element you will able to see an element of type tag input let me go back this is the element of tag type input and all this is our attribute values there are so many attribute values you will see it here now even though they are null because you know these are these are internally developed uh, one step ahead then what you see in the element right whatever you see in an element are the selected attribute values but there are so many attribute values if you if you type this and if you try to expand it you will see a lot of details inside it i don't want you to go deep down here as of now uh, most of the 99% of the time you may not even need it but the only thing you sh you can do here is use dollar x give your whatever x path you are writing right hit enter the output should be the element you are you are looking for right so let's say in yes so here in 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 the username i want to identify a name name equal to username so what i'll do i'll copy this name equal to username here okay let me here i'll go thank you name equal to username now i'll copy this complete x path go to console and then dollar x and in that function double quotes i will give this value and hit enter and then it will see it has identified it it has given me the length equal to one if i hover my mouse it it's also you see at the top it is identifying it is highlighting that element right yeah. and the length has to be one if the length is two or if length is three which means whatever x path you are writing that is deriving more than one elements right so that is not the correct way so that the selenium what it will do during execution whatever the first element it finds it will try to perform an action on that first element which we do not want correct yeah. so this is the <coughs> this is the one more uh, advanced way of locating using a customized x path so far so good okay now coming back to your question of how and where we can use uh, driver dot close and driver dot quit right so let me let me do this for you i wanna i wanna i'm looking for a page where it can open in it in a new tab let me see this okay uh, any any example do you have where it can open it in a new tab yeah okay fantastic ah, we found it it's on the on the salesforce.com the moment i click on privacy right it is opening in it in a new tab right this, this is a perfect example okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come on this page login.salesforce.com so let me <clears throat> let me create another quick new class so here we'll say driver close driver quit uh, very bad naming uh, but it's okay uh, public static void main click finish okay uh, let's try to simply copy paste at least okay till this system dot property driver and then navigate to salesforce.com so here instead of facebook we're gonna go to salesforce.com and now the next thing we want to do here is driver dot get sorry oops not get driver dot 
find out element by dot x path right now here let's try to un understand the x path for the privacy tab let me close this and let me okay let it open okay for this one now <clears throat> let's do one thing <clears throat> right click inspect so this privacy is what what tag type it has no no what tag type it is a anchor value right oh, yeah. yeah so i have an another uh, section where i'm going to talk about how do we identify the link using a, a various functions called contains and text but yes as of now you know how to identify using id right so let me use that and then we will we will use at least uh, x path okay so so let's go back uh, how to write a customized x path first is your tag name right double forward slash what is the tag name anchor a right and then in double and then square brackets in sorry at the rate what you want to use i id okay and then at the rate id id equal to the value of id is privacy link right now and then we're gonna do something on that what we're gonna do dot click right click is the operation we would like to do and not send keys because it doesn't make sense to send keys to there okay so let 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 me run this and then what i'm gonna do here for you is let me close all this in the first example i will simply do driver dot close okay I'm simply gonna do driver dot close and let's run this. Salesforce.com and now <clears throat> okay. Didn't it open in a new tab? It did, right? Uh, okay, let me let me because it uh, I, don't, I, I think it happened so fast that yeah. it opened it and it closed the previous one so let like me yeah yeah it will open it in a new tab uh, let me let me run it again without driver dot close okay so let's run it without driver dot close. Okay, it's going to Salesforce, and now you can see two different tabs, yeah. right? So you can see two different tabs because whenever you click on this particular privacy tab, it it is opening it in a new tab, right? Now with this example, I'm not gonna close this example. Now <clears throat> here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna enable driver dot close. Let's enable driver dot close and run it. Now you will see the session in which the the test was running, which was the first tab here. This is the login frame. This is the tab. The moment it opened privacy policy, the next instruction it it executed so fast that it's difficult to observe, you know, in a real time. But it closed the the closed the previous session because of driver dot close. Okay, so driver dot close will will close only the session which is in which is he is in currently working okay, you know and now if i use driver dot quit instead of driver dot close that's what you will see the difference now let me use driver dot quit and now let's run this and now we will see what if now you see i have four browser open okay here carefully observe salesforce.com see everything closed see i had a four browsers and now i only have three so that's the difference between driver dot close and driver dot quit so driver dot close is gonna close only the browser in which it is currently active it is currently working on you know 
uh, and uh, the quit the quit yes the quit is going to close everything whatever he has uh, opened or whatever in that session it is being accessed you know <clears throat> so that's the generally speaking driver dot close should be used in between the test cases like for example i opened the privacy tab right i'm i'm going to jump on i'm yeah i'm going to jump on that tab yeah i'm going to jump on that tab uh using uh, <clears throat> some some more methods which we will learn and then do something on that tab and then use driver dot close right if the driver dot quit you should be using it generally when we are done with our entire testing of a specific uh, flow and then i want to just close it so use uh, driver dot uh, sorry quit then use driver dot quit in that way okay Okay, so do a more practice on customized XPath. Now let me quickly introduce you to, I think I already explained to you how do we identify the element using the element tab, right? Using the control F, you see the search bar, there you can start writing your XPaths, right? Just do a practice, just say type input and say, oh, one out of 40. Okay, how do I filter it? Now in double brackets, I have to give a specific information. So let me say at the rate and then I'll say ID. The moment I say ID was 17, okay. Then again, let me filter it. Then equal to, let me give the value. So let's say I'll get Saurabh. And I'll say, oh, zero out of zero, which means there is no ID called Saurabh for the input tag. But when I see this and then I see enter, oh, there is nothing. Just see, <coughs> at the rate ID and then just, just do this practice, you know. And then say here, here you see UN, UN HF ID, something, something, right? So now here also, if you see next, next, it will identify next, next IDs. So here, let's say I want to identify this one, login starter URL. So I'll say equal to, and then what if I give capital login? Let's let, let me figure out if I give cop capital login underscore start and then uh, URL, right? Will it identify? No, it's not identifying, which means it is case sensitive, right? So I'll have to exactly provide the ID, which is login underscore start and then U capital RL. And then if I enter, uh, I think I'll have to copy. <laughs> I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm missing some. Oh, no, 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 no. I think I, I, I just missed the single quote. Yeah. Okay. So now if I give the exact single code, now it is a one of one. So let me type URL as like this and type enter. No, it is not identifying, right? So this is how you will have to start. And then if I don't want to use input, if, if I don't want to use, if I remove the input and click enter, it's not going to identify because that's not a syntax. It doesn't understand that. So you have to give star, which means so identify this ID in any of the tag. Then it will say, okay, I found one, correct? So these are some way. Now what I'm going to show you, let, let me quickly finish this. Uh, so let's say this one, username, right? Now, if you click on this, if you remember in our previous session, what we used to do is we used to go to this particular element, which is highlighting that, uh, uh, that, that element, right click on it, go to copy and then copy XPath. Okay. We, ha we haven't discussed on full XPath, which I'm going to do it in the next session. But if you use this one, yeah, we, we're gonna use, we're gonna understand that there is a some more uh, concept of relative and absolute experts. We're gonna cover that in detail. So, uh, so far we were using this option, right? So if you use copy expert and now if you go back and try to paste it here, now whatever it was giving you, if you observe this, now you understand this, right? This is the syntax which we learned today, right? Double, double forward slash star id equal to username so whatever you are doing right click copy whatever the xpath it is copying for you you can also write it on your own you don't need to even do that right click copy right and if you want to validate that whatever the whatever the xpath the right click copy is giving me is correct or is going to work for me how you going to quickly do is let's say this login button i'll click on the login button and i'll say okay i want to find an xpath right click copy copy xpath directly go to here paste it here and see one of one if it says one of one which means this xpath is gonna work for you right 
and then you also understand the syntax it is giving you because this is what we just now learned how do we write our own customized xpath using what syntax if i don't want this star then i can also remove this star by just giving input tag because this button is of input right it is still going to give me the same result so this is very important and this is just a beginning of writing your xpaths there are multiple ways we're going to learn all of them in a very systematic way step by step incremental way okay <clears throat> so so the I want you to do the practice for the element tab and a console tab. Uh, we understood both of them today, right? If you go to if you go to element tab and do control F, this is how you get a search box where you can simply copy paste whatever the expert the browser is giving you by doing a right click just to see that it it gives you only one result, right? Or you can simply start writing your own expert there, and it, it, it should give you one result. This is a one way or the more advanced way is go to a console type dollar X, which is a function. And then in that function, you have to pass the value, which is nothing but your X path. And then when you hit enter, it has to give you length one. Okay. This is an another way. So <clears throat> let's end the session today at this stage. Uh, tomorrow we're going to cover some more aspects of uh, how do we write using CSS selectors? There are multiple ways with which we can also write using customized CSS selectors. Okay. So, and we will also cover the full XPaths. Yes. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about absolute XPaths and uh, and the relative XPaths in detail. And there we will also understand about the full XPaths. Okay. Okay. Then uh, see you in the next session.